For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rhonda Bellamy. I'm the president and CEO of the Arts Council of Wilmington and New Hanover County and administrator for the Artist Support Grant through the North Carolina Arts Council. This grant is open to artists in New Hanover, Pender, Brunswick, Columbus, and Bladen counties. And we're happy to serve that five county region here in Southeastern North Carolina. We are going to go right to the application and go step-by-step step. should you have any questions we will answer any questions that you have toward the end of the presentation. So with that said, and uh, I have more people to admit, we had 63 people who signed up for this grant workshop. We had 25 at the last. And so I'm glad that the word is getting out and wish you all uh, the best as we prepare for the panel deliberations. With that said, I'd like to share my screen, which is, uh, Again, all of the information is available at artswilmington.org on our grants page. And on that grants page, you will see the North Carolina Arts Council logo, as well as the Arts Council's logo at the top. So I, I will preface this workshop by saying that the purpose of this grant is to award exceptional artists by funding an opportunity that is pivotal to success in whatever discipline they're in. This is multidisciplinary. Uh, we know that we do have a preponderance of visual artists in every grant cycle because we are just a hotbed of visual artists, uh, but music, literary arts, performing arts, all are game. And I will also tell you um, that we run out of money for this grant. This year it's gonna be about $30,000 that we'll be administering. We run out of money before we run out of talent. And so we'll get into the panel deliberations and how they decide things in a little bit so that you can strengthen your application as you go forward. So this grant was previously called the Regional Artist Project Grant and it morphed into the Artist Support Grant as we sought to provide direct support to individual uh, artists during and following the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And I'm not going to read everything verbatim. You have access to the same thing that I'm reading. I just want to use this as a template for our discussion this afternoon. So again, artists of all disciplines encouraged to apply. Um, this will support projects from October 1st of 2022 through June 30th of 2023. And the awards generally range around $500 with the meet from 500 to 1,000 with most people getting $1,000. Um, you may receive full or partial funding depending upon where you fall in the rankings and uh, how many app total applications we get that are fundable. Again, this is the second of two workshops that we've held and we're happy to reach out to dozens of artists in Southeastern North Carolina. So let's look at the eligibility requirements. This is for individuals and artist collectives. So if there are a group of artists, a band for instance, that wanted to uh, purchase uh, an amplifier for their roadshow, they would apply as an artist collective but individuals are certainly encouraged to apply as well. This is a key point. Uh, your residency really matters. You have to have lived continuously in the region at least one year before the application deadline. So you should have been here since uh, before, what is this, September 1st or uh, August 16th. I'm sorry, September 16th of the previous year. So you have to have lived in the area. That's very, very important because these are broken down by counties in North Carolina. As you know, we have 100 counties. And so our group of five uh, is adjacent to another region that might have four or five counties, but you have to live within the region that you're applying for for a year before you apply. All members of a collaborating team must be North Carolina residents, um, meaning that if your drummer, for example, lives in Georgia, you're not eligible to apply on his behalf. This is really important because these are funds from the North Carolina Arts Council. 
And in fact, to that end, resumes documenting residents for all team members have to be included with that application. So if you have received funding since, and this is um, actually incorrect, if you've received funding since 2019, 2020 from the North Carolina Arts Council, you're not eligible to apply for this grant. We've had several calls from people who have received funding right around that, uh, the time that the pandemic began. Um, and so they are really not eligible for this grant. They can apply again next year. Conflict of interest, um, our current board and staff members of the consortium partner organizations and their family members are not eligible to apply for the award. So our partner uh, organizations here in Southeastern North Carolina are the Brunswick Arts Council headed by Mary Beth Livers, as well as the Columbus County Arts Council headed by <clears throat> Sally Mann. There are no, uh, fiscal arrangements so far with Pender or Bladen counties, but because they don't have uh, active arts councils that get their funding directly from the North Carolina Arts Council. And so we serve in that capacity. Please feel free if you live in those two counties uh, to reach out to me. In any of the counties, you can reach out to me, but also uh, if you live in Brunswick or Columbus counties, you may reach out to the leaders in those counties as well. This is another sticky point for the artist support grant, the student status. So you cannot be enrolled full-time in undergraduate or associate degree granting programs at all. Um, if you are in a certificate program, it's generally eligible, but not if it is actually in your field of study. So as the North Carolina Arts Council interprets it, our artists who are pursuing graduate degrees and subjects other than their art form may be eligible if they meet the other eligibility criteria. And so if you have any questions about student status or residency, please be sure to seek me out before uh, you submit the application. Eligible projects and cost. Uh, so in, uh, new direction, the North Carolina Arts Council is saying that up to 50% of the grant amount may be used for artist fees for your creation of the work or the process. Um, in addition to that, these funds may be used for the completion or presentation of a new work, um, career promotion, such as um, creating your websites, portfolios, uh, audiovisual documentation and online presentation, um, training. We Many times we have artists of all disciplines who want to get professional development uh, in their field, whether it's online or in person, uh, that is an eligible expense. And travel, the cost of transportation, lodging and food for training, professional conferences or research. Um, and we've had several of these for research. In fact, we um, funded a trip to Greece, a travel trip to Greece, um, for research on a particular book that this author was writing. And so that is an allowable expense. Now, here are some of the things that we do not cover. Uh, it's not for scholarships, for undergrad or grad level education, not for projects that support or oppose a particular candidate for public office. Uh, also not allowed are uh, projects that are exclusive to members of a particular faith group. Um, and also projects that do not have a direct effect on the applicant's growth as an artist. Um, so many times they say, oh, I wanna you know, put on a talent show. Well, this is not that type of grant opportunity. This is something that's going to move your career to the next level. Going down, I think we're all clear on the deadline, which is <clears throat> excuse me, September, Friday, September 16th at 5 p.m. Uh, we want all of the applications submitted online to grants at artswilmington.org. And the subject line should read ASG 2022. Uh, you may also hand deliver if you don't have computer access, but it is much easier if you email it. So let's talk about the evaluation criteria. This is what the, the panelists will be uh, looking at. They're gonna be looking at the overall excellence of the applicant's artwork. So the work samples really are going to help tell the story of where you are now. This is the only way that the panel 
uh, who is seeing a paper form or in this case, an electronic form of your application, this is what they're gonna judge you on. Okay, this is what, what this artist is capable of right now. They will also look at the feasibility of the proposed project. And um, I'll, I'll give you an example of the feasibility of the proposed project. So we know that this grant is $1,000. We have applicants who sometimes ask for upwards of $20,000 with no accounting for where the other 19,000 is gonna come from. So the panel will say, that's not really feasible. You know, they're saying, you know, I'm gonna have bake sales for the next year or so. That's just not a feasible project to the panelist. And thirdly, they will look at how this is going to contribute to your, the evolution of you and your arts practice. Um, I'll give you another example here. We have uh, someone who, whose work was top notch, just top notch. The feasibility of the pro proposed project, she wanted to go to uh, an arts uh, conference headed by someone who she thought was a, a master in her field, but it didn't show how she was going to, her work was going to be elevated as a result of this. It was, you know, it was static. It was, you know, we're going to the same thing. We're doing the same thing where there was no difference. It was just an excellent application, a feasible project, but it didn't show any growth in her artistic career. So these, uh, all of the completed, I'm sorry, you'll have to pardon me because I'm still admitting people. But anyway, all completed artist support grant applications will be judged by a multi-county panel of established artists, arts professionals, educators, administrators, who are going to review and evaluate the applications and allocate funds for selected projects. I am the administrator. I do not have a vote at all. Uh, I guide the application process. I guide the evaluation process. I oversee the evaluation process and make certain that each applicant is given their due uh, and <clears throat> can often share things if it's someone who's well known in the community uh, or that I've had contact with before to clarify perhaps something. But other than that, I do not make decisions. This is left to the artist's support grant panel who will be spe specifically convened to look at the applications. And so there's contact information for us as well as our partner counties. And again, feel free at any time before the 16th to reach out to me or my assistant who I think is on the call as well, Anthony Guevara, who can also be reached at the Arts Council. So as you can see, the application is very, very simple. Please do not overthink this. Uh, that's just general information. The State Arts Council does require us to ask about race, and that is because we have to be certain that these funds are distributed equitably, and so we do have a mandate for how much of this must be spent for populations that are um, non-majority. So we're asking how much grants what your grant request is up to $1,000 on that front page as well, just so that we have all of the information <clears throat> for the creation of the database up front. And then you're certifying that you are not a student currently enrolled in an associate's undergraduate or graduate program. You must sign off on that. <coughs> now, here is where you tell your story, the project description narrative. And uh, we want this to be no more than a page. It's saying attach separately um, a, a 1,000 word limit. You can do it in less than 1,000 words, all the better. But it should explain your proposed project and how it will have an impact on your career as an artist. Include your artist statement and project description in, within this 1,000 word limit. Um, so you're describing your project and the proposed use of funds, explaining what this project will enable you to do that you're unable to do now, and summarize how this project will advance your career or development as an artist. That's all we wanna know. 
Here, we'll ask for the grant amount again, the probably your start and end dates, again, falling within that October 1 to June 30 period. And then the project budget. So let's say, for example, um, you want to buy a kiln. So, I'm sorry. Uh, kiln goes there. The kiln, let's say, is $1,500. You're asking us for $1,000, which means that you're going to match $500. So for the $500, you'll say um, personal, perhaps, uh, let's see, personal funds. $500. Personal funds would be $500. <laughs> Is that understood? Any questions about that? Okay, great. So that's how you operate the or uh, complete the expenses. In, in terms of income, if you're providing any um, project income, including the personal funds, any other grants that you may receive or other sources that contribute towards your grant amount, please list that there. So we can ascertain whether or not this is a feasible project. A budget sheet can be downloaded, but what you have here will suffice. Um, also, I want you to remember that this is not a matching grant, so um, you don't have to match it. It's not required, but you do have to show what you can do for the relative amount of money that we're gonna give you. And you know, as I said, the average is about $1,000. So let's talk about work samples for just a bit. Can everyone hear and see me? All right. So um, again, most of the panelist decision is gonna be predicated on the strength of your work samples. So we're looking for high quality digital work samples, links or attachments will work. Uh, if you're sending attachments, JPEGs, MP3s, PDFs, universally accepted forms, of correspondence uh, and uh, audio samples. They must be of your work only, hard copies will not be accepted and the work must be complete, have been completed within the past three years. Uh, we ask that you attach an inventory list with the following descriptions for your applicable discipline. We have uh, dance and performing arts, uh, we, up to three recorded performances, not to exceed a total of 10 minutes. So if you um, are a dancer, you can provide us up to three recorded performances, no more than 10 minutes. And your description should include the date and location of the performance, the title of the piece, the names and roles of key people, including directors, choreographers, lead performers, whatever, and a short summary may also be included. Music pretty much the same, up to three recorded uh, minutes performances live or studio, not to exceed a total of 10 minutes. Again, with the description, including date and location of the performance, those types of things. Um, composers and songwriters should also submit scores, lyrics, and or lead sheets as appropriate. Writers, we're asking for no more than 12 pages, each of one to two manuscripts, Poets may submit five to seven poems. Playwrights may submit documentation of a recorded performance or staged reading. Um, and we'd like those video clips not to exceed five minutes. And in terms of visual arts, we allow for up to 15 images of work. And the reason why you get up to 15 is because many times artists, depending upon what medium they're working in, like to show different uh, views, especially if it's something that's 3D and you wanna show, for example, the back view and the side views, that's why we allow up to 15 images. Give us the best that you have. Film, um, documentation of one or more completed films. Um, we don't want those video clips to exceed five minutes. And again, description information needed. 
Um, please note video and audio work sample sizes um, because we want to be able to access them. And sometimes if you have um, large images, large audio files or large video files, it can sometimes be difficult for all of the panelists. Again, it's not just us that are looking at this, these samples for us to disseminate them to all of the panelists and they be able to view or hear them. And uh, again, here at the end, we've added a checklist of the things that you should be including your application, the profile, the narrative, the artist statement, uh, which ideally would be incorporated into your narrative, uh, an artist resume, if you have one, um, budget support, if you're going above that $1,000 threshold that we have for the grant uh, and your support materials. Um, if you have anything like catalogs that you've already produced or reviews or programs, you may add that as well. Um, letters of recommendation are optional. Um, we probably will not pay up, well, some of the panelists do, but generally I, I, and I was talking to my assistant earlier today, I've never seen someone ask for a letter of reference from someone who was gonna give them a bad one. So um, it's just a step that you don't need to take for this particular grant. And again, your work samples and your inventory list. And that is it for the artist support grant. Uh, I would again tell you, do not overthink this. You are probably already engaged in your practice and, and have attained some level of proficiency in what you're doing. So just tell us, show us that you're an exceptional artist and how these funds are going to help you take it to the next level. I'll take questions now. All right. um. We've got a lot in chat. <laughs> Let, let's, let's go back up to chat and just think. And so um, Anthony put also um, the link to our page in the chat. If someone was offered this particular grant, could they apply for any North Carolina grants offered by the state? Um, The, the state has a few grants, but th this is primarily how they fund individual artists. Everything else is really on an organizational level. So I would like to say that we are it. This is it. Um, and Brian, Todd, Barnett, you asked that question. Do you have a follow-up question to that? Uh, no, that was really it, thank you. Okay. Can you apply as an associate degree student in the arts who is enrolled part-time? Uh, I would, they are very stringent about this um, provision that you cannot be in uh, a degree granting program. And so I would say even uh, as part-time, no. Is shipping included if ordering campus prints online? I'm not sure what that means. Catherine, would you like to Clarify your questioning. Okay, we'll go on to the next question. Can the artists contribute their own funds toward the project to support feasibility? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Can I okay. ask my question again? This is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi. If I order canvas prints online, it will. There's shipping involved to ship the canvas prints back to me at my home. Can I include shipping in the budget? Yes. No. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes, you may. All right. Uh, can the artist uh, contribute their own funds to the? I answered that already. Uh, looks like maybe. Let's see. Okay. Can a link to a Google Drive folder be used instead of attachments? Yes, but be certain that you give us permission to view. We don't need permission to edit, but make certain that we have permission to view and that we can share it with others because this is going out to the panelists. All right. What is the file size not to exceed for images? 
we don't know until we get them or can't get them. So I really don't have a more specific answer on the file size not to exceed for images, um, but high resolution images come through without any um, problem. So I, I don't know how to answer that. But if you send something and we're not able to open it, we will reach back out to you and say, you know, we've got to have this in another format, either Dropbox or something like that. Can we add images into a zip file? You may. I have a question. Sure. I was just trying to get through the list of those that were already in the chat. Yes, Please further explain the requirement to prove residency. So, again, um, you have to live in Region 5, New Hanover, Pender, Brunswick, Columbus, and Bladen counties. You, your residency must be within at least within a year of you applying. So you had to have lived in New Hanover, Pender, Brunswick, Columbus, or Bladen counties since September 16th of last year. And many people, you know, have no problems with the residency requirement. If you do, please reach out to me. If there are any specifics about your particular application, please feel free to reach out. Right. May I follow up with a question on that? Sure. In the list of requirements, I thought there was something about a resume related to residency. Right, and those are for unincorporated uh, artist groups. So I used the example at the very beginning about you know a band that's formed and they want to buy a, a be able to purchase a, an amplifier for the band. Everybody in the band has to live in this region. Got you. And how how do I prove that I've been here for the year? Well, what just state that I have. You do, and you have to have your this information as part of the application. Your address okay. is included as part of the application. Understood. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, do the funds have to be used between October 1st, 2022 and June 30th, 2023? Yes. So you should not be applying for something that takes place in September because it can't happen in September. It has to happen after October 1st and in conclude by June 30th of 2023. All right, let's see. I think that is it for the questions in the chat. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Deborah. My question is, I already submitted, so it may be a moot point, but it'll help somebody else. I did my entire file. I saved everything as a PDF file, including the images. Mm -hmm. So it's just one PDF file. Is that acceptable or the- It is very acceptable. In fact, it's preferable for me. Yes. <laughs> And, and Anthony. <laughs> My other question is, two other questions. When will we have word? So generally what we do, and I can give you the exact dates because we've already logged them into the calendar. So we have to allow the panelists uh, two weeks in order to review the applications. So we're anticipating that they will have the applications. Well, it takes us actually a couple of weeks to compile all of the information and get it in a form that the applicants can see. We do it by discipline. So we will have all the visual artists in one category, all the dancers, all the musicians. And so that takes us a couple of weeks to process. This is massive amount of paper uh, and, and work samples. So we allow ourselves two weeks. Then we have to allow the panelists two weeks to review all of the submissions. And then we come together it, for the panel discussion, um, and I can give you that date as soon as I can minimize to, to look at my calendar. Uh, and then my board of directors of the Arts Council of Wilmington and New Hanover County has to approve, uh, approve of the recommend, recommended levels of funding by the panelists. Um, so that's generally, you know, kind of overnight, a shoot it out. These are the recommended um, funding levels, approve. Uh, it's an up or down vote. They, they don't go in and say, oh, you know, why I hate her stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> there's none of that that goes on. So um, they generally, you know, overnight, within, within a day at least, uh, we have a quorum of the board that responds to the recommended funding levels. And then that's when I will put out um, first to the uh, artist 
who have applied for the grant, information that you have been awarded and that your contracts uh, will be following within the next two or three weeks. Um, we generally hold a jingle and mingle uh, in December, mid-December usually, and have a ceremony recognizing the artist support grant winners as well as our grassroots arts program grant winners. Um, that's a, a grant that we give to organizations. And this year, we're happy to say that we uh, we generally fund fifty thousand dollars a year. This year, we're going to fund one hundred thousand dollars to local arts organizations. So we're very pleased about that. Um, and so we have this ceremony called Jingle and Mingle that has not yet been uh, scheduled, but that's usually in December, uh, where we'd like for you to come and. By that time, we generally have our funds from the North Carolina Arts Council and are able to make disbursements. Then at the end of the grant session in G June, what kind of a wrap up is required by the applicant? Yes, Those so there is a, a final report that is very, very simple. We just ask some very uh, basic questions. If you are, for example, um, making an equipment purchase, you know, get, send us the receipt. Okay. It, it's it's very, very simple. And in fact, I'll, I'll see if I can pull up a final report. Uh, uh, well, these are all, <laughs> I, I don't have it here, but it will also be posted on the Arts Council's website. And I'll post it ahead of time, just so you, um, when I post the video, so you'll, you'll know what you have to do should you be awarded. Okay. It will also be sent with your contract package. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. I tried to um, download the uh, budget, um, the Excel spreadsheet, and it wouldn't, um, it was for read only. And I just wondered if that's my computer or the sun glitch. They said, uh, my computer said it was corrupt. Uh, well, that is, uh, that, that's a link to the North Carolina Arts Council's website. And again, oh. you don't really, even, for purposes of this grant, you don't need that budget. You can just okay. put it right into the application. Okay, thank you. All right. Again, thank you for joining us for this uh, grant workshop. I'm wishing you all the very best. And if you have any questions related to your specific application, um, the application process, uh, please feel free to reach out to me or watch this video again. <laughs>